Hey, welcome everyone. This is episode eight of The Stan Show, and it's going to be a long one. I'm sorry to tell you that up front, but it is. Uh, it's a deeply personal one, and uh, I hope you can get into it. And we're talking about making a DIY music video. The catch for me on this one is it ha has to do with an original song that I wrote and recorded more than 30 years ago, which is a story in itself. Uh, I used to write songs and record them. I haven't done that in a long time. But this particular song, uh, a song called Valentine's Day, that I had uh, written and uh, through a friend that I had met through working at Paragon Music Center, the old Palms Movie Theater in, in um, Pinellas Park, back in the early 90s, 91 or 92, I was able to record this song. He was a young man, a trust fund kid uh, with a lot of money, and he had come into Paragon and started buying expensive equipment and buying it from me. So we became fast friends, and I found out that he was planning to build a recording studio. He was building a recording studio in a garage apartment at his house. Uh, I ended up going there a lot. I brought him some clients. I myself was a client, uh, recorded, and he didn't know much, so he used my knowledge to uh, put put the whole thing together. Now, this is the first time I'd ever worked with digital recording. It was Pro Tools. Before that, it was all tape recorders, reel-to-reel, -reel and things like that. So it was, uh, it was a learning process, and it was very, very cool. And I learned a lot of what I know today from those sessions. When I recorded Valentine's Day, I didn't have any extra talent available. Uh, it was all me. I had to play the drums, the bass, the rhythm guitar, and sing it. I did uh, get one of my friends to come in who, I can't remember who that was at this time. I think it might have been Ron Panganiban, but I'm not positive, uh, came in to record a guitar solo for this song. Uh, it's rather long. It's about five minutes long. There are four verses to it, uh, but it tells a story of two people, Billy and Susie, who get married, and then they have problems and, you know, a lot of stuff happens in their life. So it takes a while to tell a story like that. Um, anyway, I... I recorded that. I didn't do anything with it because what could you do back then? I think uh, MP3s were not available yet. It's not something we were doing yet. Uh, you could put it on a CD and you could, it wasn't like we could share it online in the early 90s. So I would write, <coughs> I would write and record. Uh, I had, the great fortune to be part of an album process uh, for a Young American Showcase when uh, Joel Johnson had bought the company and decided to make a cassette tape for the Free Fair bands to take around with them and sell as part of their program. And uh, I ended up writing a lot of those songs and performing them and singing them and playing drums on them. A lot of those songs, we would record you know, the full version of it with all instrumentation and then uh, we would bring in one of the lead singers from a showcase band to sing it. Uh, later, I would go back and I would take that out. I would put in my own vocal because it was a song that I had written and wanted to perform the vocal on. Anyway, I learned a lot from that process. That was an eight-track recording process. And we, you record it, you mix it, you master it. And that cassette tape went out. Uh, and kids all over the country bought that thing, thousands of them. So that was uh, a great opportunity, and I learned a lot from that. When I wrote and recorded Valentine's Day, there was really no way to put it out there. Uh, there's no way to get anybody to listen to it. Uh, so that was 30-some years ago, 32 maybe years ago. And I have forgotten all about that song. I didn't even remember writing it, recording it. Um, and then it showed up couple weeks ago on a CD that we found here at the house. And I was like, oh my goodness, that, you know, completely forgotten about that corny song. And uh, I listened to it. And I thought, it sounds pretty good. My vocal's a little out of tune here. Uh, the mastering's not very good. Uh, the, the frequency response for the whole thing could have been better, but I've learned a lot since then. We have really amazing technology at our fingertips now. We can now take a song that was completely recorded, all the tracks, vocals, everything, all mixed together, and we can put it through a process that separates these parts from each other. It's very, very amazing because it works 
incredibly well. They call it stemming, or when you put it through the process, uh, it separates the drums, separates the uh, guitars. You can separate the bass guitar as a separate track, and of course the vocals. And it's amazing. It really, really works well. Now, I use a website for this. It's called laolao.ai. It's L-A-L-A-L dot A-I. Let me show it to you here. There it is. This is Lao Lao, and they have stem splitting. They have a voice cleaner, and they have a voice changer. I don't care about either one of these, but I do use the stem splitter. Now, this is not a free service. It does cost a little bit of money. It's not a lot. In fact, I ran out of my initial minutes. They don't. It's not a subscription fee. They charge you per minute of content that you're processing. And I ran out of my initial investment. I can't remember what it was. I think it was like $15 or something like that. And I then was able to buy 300 more minutes. That's a lot. 300, considering, you know, it's songs like three or four minutes typically. Uh, I was able to buy 300 more minutes for 25 bucks. I said, that's a no-brainer. But this one's a little limited in that you can only separate uh, into two stems at once. There are other ones that will separate everything at the same time. Um, this one, I can uh, separate the lead vocal from the rest of the music, and then I can go back and take the music track that I just made, and I can separate the drums from the guitars. And that way, I end up with vocals on one track, guitars on another track, including bass guitar, and uh, vocals on another track. Now, if there were keyboards in there, they would be mixed together with the guitars. Uh, now, there's another website that I'm aware of called emastered.com, and that will separate pretty much everything. And then once you've mixed your song, it will also master your song for you through its automatic process. And it does have a lot of variables and things you can adjust. I checked it out. Uh, it was too expensive for me. Uh, this is super cheap compared to eMastered. So I went with this. Plus, eMastered wants a subscription. They want you to pay monthly or annually. And, you know, I just don't use it enough for that. So this is perfect for me. Plus, the quality is really outstanding. So I took my song, Valentine's Day, and I split it into tracks. And that is a vocal track, all the guitars, and all the drums. Now, in doing that, I'm able to take those three tracks I split from the original recording, vocals, rest of the instruments, and drums, and put them into a mixing application like this. This is not an official, what they call a digital audio workstation, like some of the big ones like Pro Tools and Logic uh, and Mark of the Unicorn uh, Digital Performer. Um, this, this one comes with my Adobe package, and it works very, very well. I've been using it for years, and it's great for mixing. Uh, so I don't need an official DAW because I have this at my disposal. Anyway, so I put the vocal track in here, guitars, and that's because it's really just rhythm guitar, lead guitar, and bass guitar all mixed together. And then there's a drum track down here. Now, I'm able to do things to this that are important for the overall mix of the song that it, in other words, I'm able to take the vocal and there are a couple of notes I didn't quite hit just right. And I'm able to retune those and make them right. 32 years later, I could have gone back in the garage and resung the whole thing. I said, nah, let's just leave it. It was a good performance. It just had a couple of not so great moments in it. Track number two, the guitars, uh, it needed to be finessed. It was a little honky sounding. Needed to be needed to have a parametric EQ uh, added to it to just get it warmer sounding, uh, and that's really all it needed. Uh, all a lot, all these needed a slight bit more compression to them to uh, work well within the mix. And there's something you learn about mixing is how to kind of create holes in your mix for other things to fit in, like between your drums and guitars, you're able to create uh, an EQ or equalization and in which a vocal will stand out a little bit more in that. Um, and there, there's not so many fun little tricks and things you learn along the way. But uh, you can see this song has a, has a guitar intro to it. 
And you can see where it gets a lot louder right here. This is where the drums come in. And uh, that's just where everything kicks in. It's just that kind of rather long intro on it, about 43 uh, seconds before it then kicks in. Uh, anyway, so I'm not going to play that for you right now because we're going to have a big reveal at the end of this thing. Because um, after all, this is about creating a DIY music video, right? I worked on this a long time, uh, a lot of trial and error before I came up with a mix that I thought worked. And then there was the mastering process, which is getting it all up to its proper level uh, with the proper amount of compression, maybe a little what they call an exciter thrown in there to bring back some of that crispy top end without, you know, sounding too artificial. Uh, and this, at times, even a little bit of reverb is added in the mastering process, although I did not do that here. Um, and you'll see on this other view here, this is the mixer view here. You've got, again, you've got the vocal, the guitars, and the drums. And then there's a master fader here. And I don't have anything added to that at the moment. But, I mean, I don't have a mastering uh, plug-in, anything like that added to it at the moment because I have to do that later. But I won't bore you with that whole process. I'll just tell you that there's a certain style of plugin that we, we can use to do certain things called VST3. And Adobe Audition will work with those. But for some reason, when you go to export something to a final file, those effects are not exported along with everything else. And they know it's a bug, it's a glitch and all that. So I actually play the song real time and record it into a separate application and then I will bring that back into Adobe Audition and use a mastering plugin to master it there. And and then again, when that's done, I can export it from there because I'm not using a VST3 plugin at that point. Anyway, it works and it, the quality is maintained throughout the process. So the song was finished. I had it exported. It's time to then create the music video. And what do I use for video creation? I use Adobe Premiere Pro, and I have been using Adobe Premiere Pro since I started doing digital content creation back in about the year 2000, before it was even called Premiere Pro, before Adobe even owned it. And it was an application called Cool Edit Pro. That's how far back I go with this application. And at my ripe old age, where I'm gonna be 67 in a couple of months, I'm not looking at anything new or different. Premiere Pro has been updated and upgraded many, many times over the last 25 years, and it is keeping up pretty much with other applications that are out there. There are some that are becoming more popular. A lot, a lot of them, uh, you know, uh, what, there's one specifically for Macs. There's, uh, there's DaVinci Resolve, which is you can get for free. At which the free version is actually very, very good. And if you want to pay for it, I think it's $300 for a one time, one time, and then it's upgraded forever, which is amazing. I pay a lot for my Adobe subscription, and Adobe has come under a lot of fire recently for a lot of their business practices. But I'm sticking with them because, you know, you can't teach a old horse new trick. How does that go? I'm not sure. Uh, anyway, so this is the music video that I finished last night, worked on it for a couple of days. So how do I make a music video? Well, I'm glad you asked. Uh, I use a lot of stock footage. And what's that about? Uh, stock footage used to be a real quagmire. It used to be almost impossible for independent video creators to even think about using stock footage because of the horribly prohibitive price. Uh, it, 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 you could pay as much as $200 for a single clip that you wanted to use for a piece. Um, but things have changed significantly over the years. We now have several different services that are, that offer not just only stock video, but also, uh, motion graphics, music, sound effects, uh, vi visual effects, everything basically needed for good video content creation. I subscribe to one of these services. It's called Envato. There are many of them. I chose Envato simply because I knew a lot of other people who were using it. And it has been a great decision. Envato is actually $200 for an entire year. 
to use in Bato. That's crazy when you think about it. But I have got so much out of it. It's like $200. Of course, it's a no-brainer. For I have created so many videos in the last couple of years uh, using stock footage. Now, when you're making a music video that's about two people, Billy and Susie, well, it's going to be hard to keep the characters consistent throughout the whole thing. So that's a minus, obviously. Uh, can you find people who look similar throughout the whole thing? Sure. Uh, and can you find a stock video clip for everything you need? No. But we have a new option, and that is AI video creation. And I was brand new to this the other day. I had not had an opportunity to do it prior to this, other than I have used a uh, AI spokesperson in several videos, but that's a different sort of thing. If for this content, uh, I used a, a website called runwayml.com. And th again, it's not free. I ended up spending about $35 in order to get some clips I could use to make this video. That's not a lot of money, but you have to remember that that technology is not there yet. So there's, there's a lot of problems with writing a prompt and then it creates a video from your prompt. There's a lot of problems with that. A lot of times the AI does not understand what you're asking for and will give you something completely different. You have to learn how to prompt uh, and things that would seem very, very common sense to you are not common sense to the AI. And you get a lot of tips along the way and tricks and all that, and they don't all work. So you can go through a lot of credits when you, you buy credits in order to do this. You can go through a whole lot of credits and not get anything you could use. Thankfully, they will give you credits back for the stuff that you can't use, uh, which helped me out tremendously. I still ended up spending $35. I spent an initial $15 for a first group of credits, then I spent $10 for a thousand more, and then I spent $10 for a thousand more. And say, a thousand credits, holy crap. Well, it's going to charge you 100 credits to make a 10 second scene from a prompt. So it goes fast, especially when you've got something very specific you want to do in a scene, in a 10 second scene, and it is not doing what you're telling it to do. When you tell it you want a a 30-year-old man with dark hair wearing a black hoodie and blue jeans and with the hood on his head. Nope, doesn't get that. That does not get that. It never put the hood on. Oh, it did once. It did one time. It put the hood on his head. And I actually ended up using that clip. Every other single clip I tried to do, the hood was down exposing his hair, which is not what I wanted. And I everything I tried did not work, did not work. Very, very frustrating, a very time-consuming process. I did end up with a number of clips that I did use, and we'll we'll go through that maybe in a little bit. But um, so I worked very long and hard on this. There's uh, everything has to be color corrected, and then there's a what you call a color grade added to it to give the whole thing a one homogenous look. Uh, after you've, once you color correct everything, you just get it to kind of like an industry standard of that's good color and that's good light. And it, there's nothing special about it. It's just good as far as colors, colors correct, skin tone is good, everything's good about it. But these days we add a color grade to things to give them a specific look that we want it to have in the end. My color grade is actually on this uh, track right here. It says adjustment level where I put the color grade and you can see it's affecting most of the video. The uh, the video clips that I use from the AI process didn't really need color grading. I kind of used the color grade that was given to me to uh, put on the other scenes uh, from the stock, the stock footage. Uh, anyway, Let's watch the video. I want to take a second right now before we show the video to ask you to please uh, like and subscribe to my channel, my YouTube channel. It's a great thing when you do that. It helps me get more and more and more people subscribed because uh, they end up showing it to more, you know, the way the algorithm works and all that. Okay, 
Keep in mind that Billy and Susie are not played by the same two people all the way throughout this, so in that regard, it's more of a storyboard than a finished product, but it's what I can do with my resources. I hope you enjoy it. This is uh, called Valentine's Day. I'm just going to play it right from Premiere Pro. It hasn't even been exported to its own file yet. So here you go. Susie in the chapel of love on Valentine's Day Expressing all their vows and exchanging rings Back in the limo they were on their way The Billy danced with mommy and then Sue with her dad The wedding party thought it was sweet when they played the Macarena, everybody got up, but the old people stayed in their seats. How could they know? How could they see? It wasn't in the master plan. When they promised they would not be chosen, they believed. You see, a little Valentine's Day.
And there you have it. That's Valentine's Day. Uh, something I wrote and recorded 32 years ago. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm not going to keep you here any longer, but I'd love to hear your comments. And it would be great if you would uh, give me the thumbs up, like, subscribe to The Stan Show on the Stan Arthur channel on YouTube. I appreciate you all hanging out and watching this whole thing. It's uh, been a labor of love. And I hope to see you in episode nine, whatever that ends up being. I appreciate you hanging out and uh, give yourself a big hand. I mean, really, you, you deserve it for hanging out for this. Uh, we'll see you in the next episode. See you next time.